Well, I'm excited that you're here. I'm excited that it's Christmas. I'm excited to talk to you this morning. We've been uh, going through the Christmas story the last couple of weeks and just talking about uh, the, the, the meaning of Christmas. And last week we talked about the virgin birth and the miracle that Jesus was born and how he was born. So I want to talk to you a little bit this morning. We're going to continue to talk about Mary because Mary and Joseph were asked to do something that was pretty amazing. So let me ask you this question. Have you ever been asked to do something by someone and you were surprised by their request? Have you ever been asked to do something by someone and you were surprised by their request? And, uh, you know, let, let's just, let's just, let's, t- let's do a, f- a fictional situation. Let's say you're standing in line and you're in line at the grocery store, and there's a lady in front of you, and she's holding a baby, and the baby's crying, and, and, and you can tell, and, and you can tell that the baby probably needs to eat or go down to a nap or something, and, and it just the baby will not be consoled, and you don't know them, you don't know who they are, you've never seen them before in your life, and the lady turns around to you and shoves the baby at you and says, here, will you feed him while I check out? Who would just grab that baby and be like, all right, let's go? Anybody? A few of you? You're better people than I am. Um, But, uh, like, you'd be surprised. Who would be surprised by that request, okay? Someone you don't know turns around and hands you their baby, says, here, feed them. That's kind of a surprising request, okay? Now, that's kind of a silly story, but Mary was asked to do something that was a surprise to her. When the angel appeared to her, and said, you will have a baby. You will be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. You will have a baby, and you will carry him, and you will name him Jesus. It was a surprise. It was an unusual surprise request that Mary had. So the question that we're going to ask today, and I want you to think about this throughout the morning and and probably throughout this week and this season, but the question I want to ask you today is, what is God asking you to do? What is God asking you to do, and what will be your response? What is God asking you to do, and what will be your response? So here in just a second, we're going to read Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. But let me give you a little background. Okay, so the angel Gabriel is the one who appears here. And the angel Gabriel, Gabriel is the Lord, is a, an angel of the Lord Almighty. His name means champion of God. So Gabriel was God's champion. He's a messenger. We see Gabriel appear throughout the Bible. We see him appear in the Old Testament to Daniel. He's a messenger to Mary here in this passage. So Gabriel is God's champion, God's messenger. Let's talk about Mary. You could do a little research into this time period and the customs of of marriage arrangements and all these things in this time period. Odds are, we don't know for sure, the Bible does not tell us how old Mary was. But if you look at customs of this time period, the odds are Mary was about 12 to 14 years old. Because that was roughly the age of young girls who were getting married, who were being given in marriage at that time. And so, think about a 12 to 14 year old girl being asked to do this. Okay, some of you in here are in that age range. What would you do if God asked you to do something as big as this? In our culture, it seems weird for a girl this young to be getting married. It just doesn't happen here in our culture. But it was very common in this time period, and even up through recent time periods in the Middle East, this was still a practice. In Sudan and Saudi Arabia, they allow for 10-year-olds to marry Iran allows for nine-year-olds to marry in some situations. Mary, in this account, has already been promised in marriage to Joseph. Gabriel comes to Mary and asks her to do something for God. So let's read Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. It should be on the screen, but feel free to follow along on the screen, in your Bible, on your device. Uh, But let's read through this passage. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, 
who was a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Verse 34. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. This is key right here, verse 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. I am the Lord's servant. That was Mary's response. I mean, after the surprise and the shock, when she hears the whole story, she says, I am the Lord's servant. May it be as you have said. Just some thoughts on this passage before we move into the the key items this morning. In verses 28 and 29, Gabriel says, you have found favor with God. It sounds... It sounds too good to be true for an angel to appear and say, you have found favor with God. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And at this point, Mary kind of thinks, she's, this is where she's surprised and she's thinking, man, what's about to happen? Is this guy, what, is, is this real? Is, what's he about to say? What's about to happen right here? But he says, don't be afraid for you have favor. You found favor with God. That's got to be nice to hear, Right? You think, oh, okay, good. This, we're not talking about bad things. I've found favor with God. You are going to have a baby, he says. You will name him Jesus. And your baby will grow up to be the eternal king of Israel. That's basically what he says. Can you imagine being in her shoes? First of all, an angel appears to you. Okay, that's strange, weird, different, all right there by itself. But the angel says, you found favor with God. You are going to carry God's son. And he will be the king of the Jews forever. Verse 34, Mary says, how can this be? I'm a virgin. I can't be pregnant. I can't have a child. There's no way. And she's probably thinking, you can imagine what she's been thinking. I mean, we talked about uh, the implications of of a young girl being uh, pregnant in this time period, and she's got to be thinking, this, this is going to be, this is going to be rough. How am I going to tell Joseph? How am I going to tell my family? Are they going to believe me that it was God, that I've not been unfaithful, that I have not sinned, but the Holy Spirit has come on me? I can only imagine all of these things going through her mind. How can this be, she says. And the angel says, the Holy Spirit will be on you to make this happen. Nothing is impossible with God, he says. How much faith did Mary have to have right there in God? And to believe those words, nothing is impossible with God. And she says, I will surrender to God's will. I I am the Lord's servant. So, I mean, if, if this is the exact conversation... The words, nothing is impossible with God, must have resonated with her, must have sat with her that she already knew that. And it was a reassurance of, okay, this is God. This is the Holy Spirit coming on me. Because she just says, okay, let's do it. I am the Lord's servant. Mary was asked to do something that was unheard of. Mary was asked to carry the child of God and to name him Jesus and that her son would be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And she said, 
May it be as you have said. I am the Lord's servant. May it be as you have said. So what is God asking you to do? And what will be your response? What is God asking you to do? To do and what will be your response? There's a few things that I think we can learn this morning from this passage. And so if you're taking notes, number one, we are often surprised and troubled by God's plan. We are often surprised and troubled by God's plan. How many of you have ever felt God telling you to do something and you thought, no way. No way would I want to do that. No way is God really telling me to do that. We've had several things where we've said, I've said to people, there's no way I'm going to do that unless God comes down and tells me to do it. Okay, when we, we were first married and we moved to Michigan because God told us to go to Michigan and it was cold up there. Um, but we said after a few years, we said, okay, we were leaving one church. We said, as long as we don't stay in Michigan, we'll be fine, right? God's going to have to tell me to stay in Michigan. We stayed in Michigan because God told us to for another year. And after a few years later, we had lived in, a, we, in Michigan. We lived in a couple of smaller, smaller towns. One town... Uh, has 400 people living in it. And uh, it was, uh, God called us to be there, and the ministry was great. And, but we were leaving there, and we said, okay, if we could live somewhere a little bigger, that'd be great. And so we lived in a city for a few years, and we thought, man, this is great, this is the life. I ne- we, let's never move to a small town again. And after a few years in the city of Wichita, um, a pastor came to me and said, hey, I'd really like you to be my youth pastor. And uh, I talked to him about where he lives, uh, the church uh, was Hopeton Wesleyan Church, and if you've heard of Hopeton, it's probably only because you've been there or you know me or know the people that live there. Hopeton has about 27 people that live there. Yeah. And uh, so the pastor came, now it's just outside of Alva, which is a little bigger than that, but he said, uh, I want you to come be our youth pastor. We've got a youth center in Alva, we've got all this cool stuff. I'm like, no, no, we really like it here. And uh, it was one of those things where we said, we're never going to move back to a small town. God's going to have to reach out and call us. Now, no angels appeared to us. But the short story is, I said no to that pastor three times. Said, no way. No, we're good. We like it here. And finally, we felt God telling us, we'll just go visit. And then we lived there for a few years and was youth pastor. So, um, uh, but now we're here. Then we get to come here. But, uh, so God calls you. God will tell you to do things that are unexpected. God will tell you to do things that you don't want to do. I guarantee you that Mary did not want to be pregnant in that, in that stage in her life. She was not married yet. She should not be pregnant. She should, she should just, she's about to be Joseph's wife. And there was times in Jewish history where they would stone a young girl for getting pregnant before she got married. It was a death sentence. So I'm sure all of these things are going through her mind. But she says, yes, God, I'm your servant, whatever you want. We are often surprised and troubled by God's plan. Look back at verses 30 and 31. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. And Mary says in verse 34, How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? Mary was surprised, okay? God will ask us to do things that are surprise us and trouble us. Mary was surprised. How can this be? Because I'm a virgin. There's no way I could be pregnant. She was surprised. God will ask us to do things that range from interesting to boring, wonderful to awful, difficult to easy, dangerous to delightful, mundane to miraculous. But God will surprise us. What will your response be? Very often, we're surprised because God asks us to do something extra outside of our normal Uh, routine. It might be to give more than we normally give. It might be to go somewhere that we don't want to go or would have never thought about going. It might be to talk to someone that we wouldn't normally talk to. 
Maybe God will say, pay for someone's meal as a demonstration of my love. Maybe God will say, take a new job to go help with ministry. Maybe God will say, take in those children, adopt them, change their lives. Maybe God will say, go be a teacher or a missionary in the public school. Be light and salt to a broken world. Maybe God will say, are you listening to me? I'm asking you to do something. I'm telling you to do something. Sometimes we're surprised. Because God asks us to do what he's already revealed in our hearts, but we're not listening. God asks us to do what he's already revealed to us in our hearts, but we haven't been listening. Oh, I know, but we're not going to do it. I know, but that's too hard, God. I know, but I don't have any extra money. God, I don't have time to do that. Have any of those words come out of your mouth? Are you not, are you ignoring what God has called you to do? Do you know what God wants you to do? How are you responding? And I'm not always talking about the big, let's move to the other side of the world and be missionaries, not even move to another town or another side of town. Let's talk about simple things that God is asking us to do. Is God asking you to actually read your Bible? Spend time in his word getting to know him. Is God asking you to tell other people about him? You interact with people that don't know him on a daily basis, but yet they don't even know you're a Christian. Is God asking you to love your neighbor? Is God asking you to love the unlovely, those that are hard to love, those that no one else will love? Is God asking you to forgive? You've been holding something in your heart for years, and you won't let it go because they were in the wrong. But have you forgiven them? Is God asking you to give tithe? Because right now you're not giving anything. Is God knocking on your heart saying, hey, are you listening to me? Because all of these things that I just said are things we should all be doing. That God has already asked us to do in his word. Are you doing what God has already asked you to do? Sometimes, sometimes it might trouble us we think, how am I supposed to do that? I can't do that. That can't be. God, are you sure that this is what you want me to be? That this is what you want me to do? I can't do that. Mary said, how can this be? I'm a virgin. I can't have a baby. But she did. God has an answer when we think we cannot do something that he wants us to do. God has an answer for that too. Number two, the Holy Spirit will help us do what God wants us to do. God's calling us to do things. God's calling each and every one of us in this room to do something. It may be the simple things that are found in his word. Spend time with him, pray, read the Bible, tell others about him, love your neighbors. But it may be something bigger. Whatever it is, and you think, God, I don't know how I can do that. Ask for help. The Holy Spirit will help us do what God wants us to do. In our passage, Luke chapter 1, in verses 35 and 37, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That was the answer. How can I do this? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And verse 37, nothing is impossible with God. Not a few things are impossible. Nothing is impossible. God can do anything. Anything that God asks us to do, He can give us the power to do it. He can give us the tools to do it. He can give us the resources. He can give us the knowledge. Anything that He asks us to do, the Holy Spirit 
will come empower us to do it. Nothing is impossible with God. We absolutely have to recognize that the Holy Spirit helped Mary with God's plan. God called Mary to do something. He sent Gabriel to appear to her and tell her his plan, and then he sent the Holy Spirit to fill her and empower her to accomplish the plan that God had for her. Jesus told his followers that he would give the gift of the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit would help us. He even said, I mean, think about this. The disciples got to walk for three years on earth, side by side, physically and side by side with the Messiah. They were right there with him, listening to him, walking with him, watching him perform miracles, watching him heal the sick, raise the dead. And at the end, right before he went back to heaven, he said, I'm going to send you something better. They're standing there with the Messiah, standing in front of him, and he's saying, I've got something better than me. I have the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to fill you, to walk with you, to guide you, to give you the tools that you need to fulfill my commands. The Holy Spirit will teach us things we need to know in John 14, 26. He'll remind us of things we've already learned. Same passage. He'll give us strength and endurance during trials. Ephesians 3.16. The Holy Spirit will give us power to overcome temptations. Galatians 5.16. He will help us pray. Romans 8.26 and 27. He will give us wisdom in decision making. Ephesians 1.17. He will give understanding of God's word. 1 Corinthians 2.9-16. He will guide a person to a specific event or situation, Acts 13.4. He will give confidence that overwhelms our fear, 2 Timothy 1.7. He will give us the right words to speak, Acts 1.8. He will develop godly characteristics within us, Galatians 5.22 and 23. All throughout the Bible, in the New Testament especially, the Holy Spirit is is guiding the believers. The Holy Spirit is giving them words to say. He's showing them places to go in order to tell people about Him. They have visions uh, about who they need to go speak to. They have words that they hadn't even prepared that come out of their mouths to say the exact right thing at the exact right time to convince people that Jesus is the only way. The Holy Spirit moved all throughout the whole testament and i don't believe he stopped he still moves in us today we simply have to ask for his guidance when god gives us something to do we have to ask for the tools we need holy spirit give me the wisdom to say the right things to my coworker holy spirit know how to help me know how to pray man let me tell you a story this just came to me um Earlier this year, I was praying and asking God, um, who at work could you help me to pray for? For those of you who don't know, uh, I, I also work uh, for a car dealership, and I travel around to several of our locations. And so I encounter lots of people, and there's a lot of people at these car dealerships that don't know Jesus. There are some that do, but there are several that don't. And I, I'm always asking God to help me to be an example Show me who I can talk to, who I can pray for. So I felt this one day that I needed to pray for someone. And I said, God, who do I need to pray for when I get to work today? And he gave me two specific names. And I wrote them down. It's like, okay, one guy was really struggling with some things. And uh, another guy I knew was a believer. And so he gave me those two names to go pray with. And so I drive an hour and a half to get to this dealership. And I pull in and I get out of my truck and the first two people I see are the two guys that God gave me their names that morning in my quiet time. And so I just walked right up to him. I said, let's, guys, I, Mel, I know you're struggling with stuff. Travis, come over here. Let's pray. And we prayed. And I, I, I hope that it was encouraging to them. Um, and 
but all I know is that I felt like God gave me the burden to pray for my coworkers, and when I asked him to give me specific direction, he did. And then they were the first two people I saw when I got there. If that's not God, I don't believe in coincidences with the spiritual, with anything, with life. When we follow God, I don't believe in coincidences. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And I believe in God placing the right people at the right time to accomplish what he's called us to do. When God asks us to do something, he will put the Spirit in us. He will empower us to do it because verse 37, we've read it how many times already? Nothing is impossible with God. Can you say that with me? Say nothing. Say nothing. Nothing Nothing is impossible with God. I want you to remember that. Okay, that's got to stick with you. Nothing is impossible with God. Number three. We must surrender to God's plan and commit to do His will in our life. We must surrender to God's plan and submit commit to do his will in our life. Do you think Mary wanted to be pregnant at 12 to 14 years old before she was ever married in a culture that not only looked down on unwed pregnancies, but literally would stone them to death for it? Do you think she wanted that? No way. I mean, when you read on later, Joseph even thought about, all right, I'm going to distance myself from this one because she's apparently not what I thought. And Gabriel had to appear to him too. So what hard things is God asking you to do? Let me tell you, every time we have made a move because God asks us to move, every time we've done something, that God has asked us to do and we followed through and submitted, surrendered our will to his calling, he has blessed that ministry and blessed those things and blessed those times. Okay, we submitted and went to work at Hopeton Church in a town of 27 people. And the ministry was great and then God brought us here and we feel like this was This was where God wanted us to be, was coming back here, even though I said we'd never come back here. See, you you stop telling God things you'll never do, okay? Because we've said it a few times, and it just keeps happening. Um, and, And God brought us back here, and we love it. This is clearly where God wants us to be. And God is blessing the ministry that we get to be involved in because we've been obedient. Now, are we perfect? Absolutely not. Do, we, do I resist things when I feel like God's ta- telling me to talk to someone? Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk to them. I don't know them. What if they make fun of me? What if they don't listen? What if I talk to them and, they're, and they just, they're like, I don't want to hear about that. Sometimes, sometimes I don't do the right thing. But when I do the right thing, God blesses the, the surrender, the obedience We have to surrender to God's plan, commit to his will in our lives. Luke 138, Mary's response. Guys, this is the key. 37, I mean, we we talked about 37. Nothing's impossible with God. 38, Mary's response. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. In other words, Mary was saying, okay, nothing's impossible with you, God. Let's do this. I surrender to you. Make it happen. Let's go. I'm yours. Whatever you need me to do, let's do it. What an attitude of service to God. Whatever you want me to do, whatever pain or ridicule or, you know, being kicked out of the family or whatever might happen, God, I'll do it. May it be as you have said, I am your servant. In fact, Jesus said in John 13 that servanthood is the greatest position we can ever take. 
when he washed the disciples' feet. So here's a key thought for this morning. Hear this. Surrendering to God's will or plan may clearly be with the conscious awareness of it being a difficult, being difficult. So surrendering to God's will or plan may be clear that it is difficult. You're aware that it's hard. Maybe it's a miraculous type of task. It may mean that you are ridiculed or rejected for doing what God wants you to do. But are you willing to say what Mary said? Are you willing to have the same response? I am your servant. May it be as you have said. All the things that I've already said about Mary, she knew, she had in her mind, I guarantee she was thinking about the consequences of an unwed pregnancy in her time. Her engagement to Joseph would likely be gone. Unwed and pregnant, she knew the punishment she faced could potentially be a life-threatening decision that she was making. She had nothing but a story of an angel appearing to her. Think about that. Mom, Dad, I'm pregnant. But it's the Holy Spirit. An angel appeared to me and said that God was going to make this happen. That it's the Savior, the Messiah. Can you imagine that? You parents in the room, can you imagine your 14-year-old daughter coming to you and saying those words? An angel appeared to me and said that I was going to carry the, ch- the Messiah and I'm pregnant. What two words are you going to hear out of that whole statement? I'm pregnant. That's all you're going to hear, right? Would you believe that story? But that was what she committed to do. It was only with the intervention of an angel that Joseph even believed and stayed engaged and stayed with her. Interestingly, um, history, we've already talked about it a little bit, but history records what would happen um, that Mary knew exactly what she would face in her home and community after she said her faith-filled statement, let it be as you have said. And she said yes. She said, let's do it. She trusted God, and he did. And through her husband, Joseph helping her, they did what God said they needed to do. They carried, she carried that child, they raised that boy, they named him Jesus, and Jesus is our Savior. Are you willing to allow God's will and way in your life? Are we willing to, God, to allow God's way and will in our lives? even if we might face ridicule or rejection? Are you willing to be made fun of for Jesus? Are you willing to be rejected by friends or coworkers for Jesus? There's people all over the world that are willing to die for Jesus, and they do, because believing in Jesus is illegal in their country. We don't necessarily have to worry about that unless someone just gets really mad at you and decides... They don't like what you said, but it's not illegal. So we face things like ridicule and rejection. Do we want to be unpopular? Are we willing to give up those things for God's will in our lives? So let's wrap this up. This is your question. What is God asking you to do And what will be your response? What is God asking you to do? And what will be your response? Maybe you're a student, middle school, high school, college. What is God asking you to do? And will you do it? Maybe you're new to this faith. Maybe God is asking you to take a new job in a new place so you can serve him in a place where people don't know him at all. Maybe it's an overseas missionary. Maybe it's just a different job 
where he needs a light in that workplace. Maybe God's calling you to be a missionary or a pastor or some kind of full-time Christian ministry. What is your response? Are you willing to go? Are you willing to give up your life here and now for something different? Maybe God's simply asking you to read your Bible today. Because it's sitting on a bookshelf, dusty and old, because you haven't read it in years. Maybe you're, you know, you're reading the Bible on a, on a digital platform. When's the last time that app was open? Do you even still have it on your device? Maybe God's simply saying, will you read the Bible today? Listen for my word every day because I want to guide your life. Maybe you're being asked to obey something you already know you're supposed to do. Forgive, tithe, love your neighbor, don't hold a grudge. Maybe you're being asked to pray for a miracle of healing in the life of someone around you. And God wants to work through your faith in him. What's your response? It's not always big, huge, life-altering questions, life-altering things that God's asking you to do. Are we responding first to the little things? I say little things because it's not that hard to crack open your Bible and read it every day. It's not that hard to pray every day. It's not that hard, usually, to forgive. It's not that hard to tithe. It's not that hard to love your neighbor. Those are not moving to the other side of the world, life-altering kinds of requests. Those are just the things that we're already supposed to be doing. Those are just the day-to-day things. Now, you may think some of those things are hard, but remember what we said in number two, that the Holy Spirit will give you the power to do it. Because what's impossible with God What's impossible with God? Nothing. Nothing's impossible. So you can make space in your life for those things. And if God's calling you to move to a different part of the state or the country or the world, the Holy Spirit can make that happen and give you the tools you need to do that. So when God asks you to do something, because I know he will, I know he is asking you to do something, what's your response? Mary said, may it be of you as you have said. So I want you to do something. There's some action to this message. So if you've got something to write with, or if you've got your phone to write down a note, I want you to do something. Get out something to write with right now. Pen, you can write on your bulletin. Get your phone out, open the notepad. Write this question down. What's God asking me to do? What is God asking me to do? And if you've got an answer right now, because you already knew, God's already been talking to you, and you haven't been listening, write down the answer. If you don't have an answer right away, pray that, pray that question today. God, what are you asking me to do? What is it you're asking me to do that I'm not obeying? What is it you're asking me to do that I need to hear And I encourage you to pray that today and throughout this week. And I want you to write down the answer. But before you write down the answer, what's your response going to be? Because see, we need to know what our response is going to be now. Before we know the answer to the question. We need to decide now, God, I'm going to obey. God, I'm your servant. Whatever you ask me to do, may it be as you have said. And I challenge you, whatever the answer to that question is, the answer, your response needs to be, here am I. I'm your servant. May it be as you have said. Do you trust God that you can answer the questions 
that you can make that response now before you even know what he's asking you to do? Do you have that much faith in God that you'll say, whatever it is, I'm going to do it? So I challenge you as to pray about that answer. And if you feel so bold as to broadcast what God is asking you to do, I'd love to hear some of the responses and what God does through your life. So if you're willing to share with me the results of these questions, I'd love to get emails or find you on Facebook. Um, and, and if you don't know me, I'm Jeremy Little. I'm the growth groups pastor here. I should have said that up front. I'm sorry. But you can find me on Facebook. You can email me at jlittle at fwcbartlesville.org. You can find that information on our website as well. But I'd like to hear what God does through you through these answers. Because I know that God's calling us to do some things. I know that God is speaking something to you right now. Some of you already know the answer. What is God calling me to do? You've already written down an answer. You already know. I would love to hear your answer to that question. And then I would love to hear how God uses you through your obedience. Let's pray. God, I thank you for speaking to us. I thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to guide us. To show us what you're calling us to do, but then to give us the tools to do it. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that Mary said, I am your servant. May it be as you have said. I thank you for Mary's faith and obedience and Joseph's faith and obedience to you lord thank you for sending your son jesus to be born as a common boy to live on this earth to sacrifice his life for our sins thank you lord i ask that you'd speak to every single one of us right now lord answer the question what are you asking us to do What are you asking us to do? And Lord, give us the faith to respond the same way Mary did. May it be as you've said. Let's do it. Give us the boldness and the strength to go out and obey. To go out and do whatever it is you're calling us to do. It may be as simple as reading the Bible consistently. It may be as big as surrendering to a call to full-time ministry and everything in between. Give us the strength to do it. Because, Lord, your word says, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for this time, Lord. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Thank you for being here. Merry Christmas. I hope to see you again tomorrow night on Christmas Eve. Have a great day.